Welcome to the Future Network Car Symposium 2021. My name is Bilal Jamusi. I'm the Chief of the Study Groups Department in the Standardization Sector of the ITU. And I'm very pleased to share with you an update on the ITU standards enabling smart mobility and intelligent transportation systems. Very briefly, an introduction about the ITU, what we do. First of all, we do the allocation of radio frequency spectrum and satellite orbits. We bridge the digital divide and we establish international standards. When we say we, it is the 193 member states, more than 700 private sector entities and about 160 academia worldwide. ITU is the United Nations Specialized Agency for Information and Communication Technologies. We're very pleased to have a significant growth in our membership over the past few years. And we're very pleased to welcome a number of communities other than the traditional telecom and ICT, because many of these new communities and verticals are using information and communication technologies to advance their solutions under what is known as the digital transformation. Some of the ITU members from the automotive industries that we're very pleased to welcome include a number of companies that you see on the slide that have joined us because of this intersection of ICTs and the automotive sector. We set the standards um, in 2020. We have published more than uh, 300 standards and a number of them are related to uh, intelligent transportation systems. Um, some of our work is geared towards achieving the sustainable development goal number 11, uh, particularly by providing access to safe and affordable and accessible sustainable transportation systems and provide road safety by expanding public transport. Now, if you look at the intelligent transportation system standards, there is a set of standards under the radio sector, ITUR, under working party 5A, in terms of spectrum allocation and harmonization, and the automotive radar, and a number of activities in the ITUT sector uh, related to cybersecurity in study group 17, quality of service, in study group 12, numbering for in-car emergency communication in study group two, as well as the internet of things in study group 20. And finally, uh, in study group 16, uh, a number of focus groups such as multimedia focus group and the autonomous and assisted driving focus group work, plus the vehicular gateway international standard developed by study group 16. Now allow me to share a little more detail about this work in the case of ITUR. Uh, as you can imagine, the, the car and its connectivity uh, is through a number of radio interfaces, some for the in-car communication, some for the infotainment, and some for the safety of movement um, in terms of parking assistance, uh, detecting um, collisions, and um, being able to react in real time to some of these uh, potential dangers. Then in a bit more detail, the ITS standards uh, in the cybersecurity arena, one important element is the over the air software updates. So as cars are connected and using a significant amount of technology from information and communication technologies, um, and receiving software updates to keep the car current with the latest software, it's important to protect that software as it is downloaded from the cloud of the automotive manufacturer, for example, to the car. So study group 17 has been working very hard on mm -hmm. providing the protection necessary for that um, software upload and update over the air. Then uh, the car is, uh, in a sense, a uh, part of our communication. Uh, initially, we had a number of standards in study group 12 on the quality of service and quality of experience of hands-free devices. But now, as we go into the car, 
there is a significant uh, amount of uh, communication that is hands-free. And uh, we have a number of test specifications that uh, ensure compliance with the ITUT P1100 series of standards that ensure the voice quality in vehicle communication. Emergency calls is an important element of saving lives. And in case of uh, an accident, God forbid, uh, the car now is able to automatically dial the emergency number. So it becomes a machine to machine communication in a sense to call the emergency hotline. And uh, then the emergency services would then come in time to, uh, to save the, the, uh, the people who are in an accident. In particular, uh, ITUT P1140, a speech communication requirement for emergency calls originating from vehicles, is referenced in the new UN regulation on automatic emergency call systems for road traffic accidents. It is referenced in UNECE WP29. ITU standards uh, also are called upon for shared codes. Um, Many of the cars today are sold with more than one SIM card, perhaps one for the management of the car itself and another for the infotainment, as well as uh, uh, overall communication of the car. Um, and as cars roam across countries, we're seeing an increased demand for shared codes uh, that are used without a specific country code. And these are attributed and assigned directly by the ITUT, the TSB, um, director. In our study group on IoT and smart cities, we've been looking at managing data in the connected car um, because the, once the car is connected, there is a significant amount of data that goes in and out of the car. And that data processing and management uh, considers in, this con in the context of this study group, the car being part of the internet of things. It is one of those connected devices in the network um, and study group 20 is working on, on that particular aspect. Study group 16 <clears throat> uh, developed a standard on the vehicular gateway, showing the various connections from within the car and outside the car. Some going to the cloud-based services, I mentioned earlier, perhaps for software updates, getting the latest map, if the road conditions have changed or there is construction on the road, uh, being able to get real-time updates to the map, especially for navigation, is critical. Uh, pedestrian and, uh, and bicycle detection uh, and communication with the infrastructure are some of the uh, communication protocols going in and out of the vehicle. We have a specific focus group under study group 16 looking at vehicle or multimedia. Uh, we can say that the car is the fourth screen after the TV, the laptop, and the smartphone, the fourth screen that we interact with on a regular basis is in the car. And this focus group is trying to look at the architecture use cases of vehicular multimedia. In fact, it has a number of working groups and has had many meetings in Ottawa, Tokyo, Budapest, and uh, latest is the vir virtual meeting um, to address use cases and requirements, architecture, the implementation of vehicular multimedia and has published a technical report that has then been adopted as an international standard by study group 16 on the use cases and requirements for vehicular mm -hmm. multimedia systems. And um, the uh, work on the architecture is ongoing um, and under development in study group uh, 16 and um, uh, in this focus group. In addition, we have a focus group that is uh, uh, more recent and it's working on the use of artificial intelligence for autonomous and assisted driving. It is looking at the behavioral evaluation of AI systems in autonomous and assisted driving to realize AI's potential to hopefully reduce the 1.3 million annual road fatalities. Um, this focus group was a spin-off of the AI for Good Global Summit when a number of experts discussing the need and importance of this topic um, proposed the creation of this focus group. Uh, it aims to support the 1949 and 1968 UNECE Convention on Road Traffic 
It had its first meeting last year, 2020, and continues to meet on a regular basis. This focus group is looking at defining a minimal acceptable performance threshold um, that AI never engages in careless, careless, uh, dangerous, reckless uh, driving behavior. AI remains aware, willing, and able to avoid collision at all times. And AI meets or exceeds the performance of a competent and careful human driver. The focus group on AI for autonomous and assisted driving has a really innovative approach. They conceived an ethical, uh, the ethical, uh, they uh, conceived the ethical thought experiment, the Molly problem, and launched it so that people get engaged in this discussion, where a young girl called Molly is crossing the road alone and is hit by an occupied, unoccupied self-driving vehicle. There are no eyewitnesses. What should happen next? And I think this question goes under a lot of the ethical thinking that goes in autonomous driving um, and has been uh, an excellent opportunity to engage the community in this focus group in not only looking at the technology, but also looking at the ethical aspects of it. We have many opportunities for collaboration. And um, because as you can see, there is uh, a very broad set of standards in the radio sector, in the ITUT, and many other organizations, standards development organizations. Almost 10 years ago, we conceived of a group called the Collaboration on ITS Communication Standards, CITS. It was established by the ITU to provide a platform to share knowledge and coordinate standards for ITS. It's attended by worldwide SDOs. It has three meetings per year usually back to back with ITU related regional events, Asia, America, and Geneva, and aims to coordinate uh, a set of interoperable ITS communication standards. And we welcome you to join us. These are some of the regional events. Previously, we used to have them as physical events, but during COVID-19, we've been holding these as virtual events. So I'd like to end by welcoming you to the future Network Car Symposium. This year is a virtual, fully digital event um, from the 22nd to the 25th of March. And I hope that you have found this brief introduction of the ITU standards enabling smart mobility useful. Thank you very much. <laughs>